Shalom, shalom, shalom. Peace and blessings, brothers and sisters. Kahala Yahweh, Bahashem, Hamashiach Yahweh Shai. May the Most High in Christ bless each and every one of you. I come before you right now on this Truth Tuesday. This is none other than the prophet, Jay Smothers of the Gathering of the Tribes Kingdom Ministries. And I welcome each and every one of you. Truth Tuesday. This is our virtual Bible study. Hallelujah. And we are certainly grateful that you all have decided to join in with us. I praise the most high for each and every one of you, each and every one of you that have been faithful. Uh, you do not know how uh, it pleases my heart and it lifts a burden off of my spirit. Uh, every time I see each and every one of you jumping on live uh, with us, and we certainly do not take that for granted or take it lightly. I am in prayer for each and every one of you every single day, uh, brothers and sisters, and I pray that you are doing the same. All right, so let's get into it. All praises to Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, and let's get into the scripture. All right, let's start with John chapter 8, verse 32, like we always do. John 8 and 32. And the Bible says, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So at the end of the day, brothers and sisters, you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians, guess what? The truth is you are the Israelites that the Bible speaks of. And guess what? We got next. Guess what? It's going to be our turn to rule, reign over this nation. And we're going to put this wicked nation that's in rulership now to shame. And many of them are going to be put to death uh, by the hands of the Most High and Christ. Hallelujah, according to the scriptures. All right. So now let's get into this week's topic. This week's topic is who are the real Israelites? Part five. Who are the real Israelites? Part five. And those of you that have been on this journey with me uh, going through the scriptures and, and the historical evidence and the scholarly uh, 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 literature that we've been able to pull out uh, to expose those that are attempting and have fooled the world into believing that they are you. But guess what? Nobody's fooled. Nobody's fooled. Nobody's tricked. Guess what? Our eyes are open and we are exposing are the lies and the deception huh, and the conspiracy uh, that have been on this earth for many, many years. Guess what? It's time, brothers and sisters. It is time for those that are the true prophets of the most high to stand up according to the scripture. We will not be uh, hid in a corner, but you shall see your teachers. And the time is now, brothers and sisters. So gird up yourselves. Get ready. Strengthen your body, strengthen your mind, get into these scriptures and let's go. Let's get ready to go home, brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. Let's get ready to go home. But let's get into the scripture. Who are the real Israelites? Part five, the bastards. That's the subtitle, the bastards. Somebody need to say that to yourself. They are some bad. Hey, that's the subtitle. Let's get into it. Let me bring my screen over and then we're going to start with Isaiah chapter 28 and verse 9 and 10. Isaiah 28, 9 and 10. All praise to the Most High. All right, here we go. Isaiah 28, verse 9 and 10. It says, Whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. And those of you that have been paying attention to the classes, I read that every single week and I explain it and expound on it every single week. The knowledge is the most highest laws. All right. The doctrine are these scriptures. The milk is when you are uh, dealing with the basics of the scriptures, the basics of the laws. So when you are weaned from the, the milk, the basics of the laws, you are ready for bigger things. You're ready for doctrine. You're ready for knowledge. All right. To get deeper into these scriptures. All right. And it says, how do we supposed to read the scriptures? The Bible says in verse 10, 
for precept must be upon precept, meaning that we must be able to go from one part of the law to another and we get the full understanding. All right. And it says precept upon precept, line upon line, meaning that we must be able to go from one verse to the next and get the understanding. All right. It says line upon line here a little and there a little here a little and there a little is when you're going from one book to another, from one chapter to another, from one part of the Bible to another Old Testament, New Testament, Apocrypha, etc. And this is how we get full knowledge and understand the doctrine uh, more clearly uh, when we are doing these things. Hallelujah. All right, let's go to Psalm chapter 111, verse 10. It says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments, his praise endure forever. So that's how you get wisdom. That's how you get understanding. All those that do his commandments. Don't be tricked, brothers and sisters. Don't be deceived. Don't be, don't be fooled. It doesn't come by any other way. If you're just listening to a teacher, but you're not keeping the commandments yourself, guess what? You're only regurgitating what you heard. You haven't learned it for yourselves. All right. So I admonish many of you, brothers and sisters, I encourage you. And those of you that are part of gathering the tribes, you know, I always say study to show yourself approved. Don't rely on me. Whatever I say, take your notes, take copious notes, go back, research and study for yourself. Hallelujah. I spend hours upon hours studying for myself, but I study to give an answer. I study to bring forth uh, teaching uh, to teach many of you. All right. And so I want to see you doing the same. Hallelujah. All right. So let's get into it, brothers and sisters. The question is, who are the Jews and who are the Jew ish? Now, we're going to go pretty quickly on this particular lesson because we have a lot of ground to cover. And it's my intention, brothers and sisters, that we can get through this whole thing uh, on tonight so that on next week we can move higher in the lesson and go to the next phase, the next uh, doctor, next doctrinal understanding. All right. So who are the Jews and who are the Jewish? All right. So uh, a few weeks in lesson one, we started to unmask the Gentiles and we learned, determined that those that are calling themselves Jews in the land today are nothing more than Gentiles disguising themselves as Jews. All right. And that the real Jews are not in that land right now. All right. Now, there are some of us that are, but as a nation, we are not. All right. As a nation, we are not. So we unmasked the Gentiles uh, a few weeks ago. So make sure you uh, go back and watch part one. Uh, if you are watching on YouTube, uh, go to the Gathering of the Tribes Kingdom Ministries YouTube channel. Make sure that you subscribe. Make sure that you like uh, the videos. Make sure that you share uh, because we're gonna we want to boost that up, brothers and sisters. And those of you that are uh, that are faithful uh, in following our ministry and also part of our ministry, uh, you are going to be critical to helping to do that. Hallelujah. So we also talked about the true Israelites, how they must fit the curses of Deuteronomy 28. If they do not fit the curses of Deuteronomy 28, brothers, sisters, family, mishpaka, they are not the true Jews. They are not the biblical Israelites. All right. Because the Israelites broke the commandments of the most high God, which was a condition in Deuteronomy 28, that if they kept the commandments, they would be blessed. If they broke the commandments, they would be cursed. Guess what? We broke the commandments, brothers and sisters. And so therefore, we were subject to the curses. We were subject to the curses. And there's no way around it. Now, do the Khazars, do the Ashkenazi Jews that are in the land today fit those curses? Do they fit any part of those curses? Can they even... Can they even identify with any piece of those curses? And the answer, brothers and sisters, is no. According to their own history, the answer is no. But according to your history, you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians, you do. You fit the curses, which means, therefore, somebody's lying. Somebody's lying about who the true Jews are. All right. And you're going to continue to find out as we continue to go through the scripture. So we also in the in uh, lessons two, I think it was lesson two 
and we talked about the identity theft and how it is that we as a nation of people are victims the, of the greatest crime known to man. And that's an identity theft of an entire race of people. Who does that? Who gets away with that to, to steal the identity of an entire race of people? All right. Guess what? We experienced that brothers and sisters. All right. But guess what? It's high time that we wake out of sleep and begin walking in our customs and our traditions and our laws and follow after our God and not theirs. Hallelujah. All right. Then we also talked about the conspiracy, how it is. It was conspiracy. This whole thing was one big conspiracy that we were victims of. So what happened and how did this conspiracy come about? Let's go to Psalm chapter 83 and verse one. Look what it says. Keep not thou silence, O God. Hold not thy peace and be not still, O God. For lo, thine enemies make a tumult. It says, and they that hate thee have lifted up the head. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. That's us. They have consulted against us. They have taken crafty counsels. They are making a tumult. They have lifted up a head all against us. And we have to wake up, brothers and sisters, and realize that we have enemies. And the Most High has identified these enemies all throughout the scripture. All throughout the scripture, brothers and sisters. And many of us like to hold hands with them, sing kumbaya with them, have them join in uh, with our fight when they cannot identify with our struggle. But yet, these are the people that the Most High has said are your enemies. Look what else they did. Verse 4. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. They don't want you to remember who you are. They don't want you to have any identity of the true identity of who you are. They don't want you to search the scriptures to find out who you are and any of your people that try to rise up and tell you the truth about who you are, if they can control them, to stop them from doing it or to stop us from believing it, they will. Ask Nick Cannon. He experienced the very same thing. Likewise, many of our other brothers and sisters that are in prominent positions that try to rise up and educate us as a people, they shut them down. Understand that. Verse 4. It says, they have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance for they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against thee. They're confederate against us, brothers and sisters. They've consulted together with one consent to make sure that they do everything humanly possible and even demonically possible to keep us from knowing who we are. It's time out of walking around calling yourself black, calling yourself Hispanic, calling yourself Indian, calling yourself uh, after the names that they enslaved you under. You are not African American. Because Africa is not your homeland. Although Israel is at the tip of Africa, it is still not considered to be Africa or in the Hamite nation of people. You are Shemite, brothers and sisters. And you have to understand that. All right, let's move on. Let's go to verse six. Look what it says. The Bible is going to identify 
who your enemies are, who you need to watch out for. It says the tabernacles of Edom, which are the so-called uh, Edomite, which are the Edomites, the so-called white race of people, and the Ishmaelites, which are the Arab people. And it says of Moab, the Chinese, and the Hagarines, and Gabal. It says in Ammon, which are the, the Japanese, and Amalek, which are the, the, uh, the Ashkenazi Jews that are in the land today that are really German. It says the Philistine, which are more Africans, with the inhabitants of Tyree, which are more Africans. It says Assur also is joined with them. They have hope in the children of Lot, Selah. When you look at this list of people, the people on this list have nationalities that we know of today, and it encompasses every single nation of people except the Israelites except the Israelites. And you're going to learn brothers and sisters that it's a big conspiracy. Let's jump down to verse 12. Look what it says. It says who said, which the list of people are the who let us take to ourselves the houses of God in possession. It says, let us take to ourselves the houses of God in possession. And we began looking uh, I think it was in lesson number three, who, who, uh, how they began to take the houses of God in possession. All right. So you should ask yourself, how can they take the houses of God in possession? How can they take the houses of Yah? How can they take the most highest house in possession? Is it referring to, uh, the heavens? No, it's not referring to the heavens, brothers and sisters. Guess what it's referring to? It's referring to you. It's referring to you who make up the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. You are the most highest houses. But watch this. How can they take the houses in possession? They first must possess the most highest people. They first must possess the most highest people. And how do you possess the most highest people? Through slavery through captivity. This is how you possess a people. You conquer that people and you possess them through slavery. And once you have them in possession under slavery, then you begin to, to do things to them. Like number two, remove their customs and laws. That's another way that you can take the houses of the most high in possession. This is how they took you into possession. They took you physically and then they began to remove you from your God. By forcing on you their customs, their laws, which put you in the midst of sin, brothers and sisters. Understand that. So, how did we, how did they accomplish this? They accomplished this by teaching us Greek worship and forcing upon us Greek worship, Greek customs, the Gentile way of living, keeping after their high, their holidays. This is how they began to remove you from your customs and laws. And let's get the proof on that. Let's go to the Apocrypha in 1 Maccabees chapter 1. Look what it says in 1 Maccabees chapter 1 in the Apocrypha. It says, Moreover, King Antiochus wrote to his whole kingdom that all should be one people, and every one should leave his law. So all the heathen agreed according to the commandment of the king. Yeah, we'll do it, the heathen said. And it says, yea, many also of the Israelites consented to his religion and sacrificed unto idols and profaned the Sabbath. So even of our people, the coon of our people say, yes, we'll do it too, master. We'll do it too, boss. What else you want me to do, boss? We'll do it, right? But then it says, to the end, they might forget the law and change all the ordinances. 
Watch this. But there were some of our people that wouldn't do it. We wouldn't go willingly. We weren't going to volunteer that thing. We would, we would fight to the death to keep our laws. But look what it says about us. Verse 50. And whosoever would not do according to the commandment of the king, he said he should die. So they threatened us with a physical death. Either you're going to turn from your God, turn from your laws, turn from your Sabbath, turn from uh, your holiness and follow after what we're doing or we're going to kill you. Understand that. This is what we were having to deal with, brothers and sisters. This is what we were having to deal with. All right. So you must understand, brothers and sisters, that there were many of us that would not do it, although there were some that were willing to do it. And those that were willing to do it. Here is what the Bible said about them. In, in second Maccabees chapter four, verse 15, it says not setting by the honors of their fathers, but liking the glory of the Grecians best of all. So there were some of our people that liked the glory of the Grecians best of all. But it was understood, brothers and sisters, that as long as we were in the midst of sin, they can keep us in subjection. They can continue ruling over us. As long as we were in the midst of sin, as long as we had iniquity in our nation, it was understood by the heathen nations that our God would not fight for us. And that he would leave us out there to continue being in the midst of sin so that they can conquer over us. And so it was their job to do everything they could to get us in the midst of sin, to keep us there so they can continue ruling over us. Right. Let's get the proof on that. Let's go to Judah chapter five in the Apocrypha, Judith chapter five in verse 20. Look what it says. Now, therefore, my Lord and governor, if there be any error against his people and they sin against their God, let us consider that this shall be their ruin and let us go up and we shall overcome them. So see, it was understood that as long as we were in the midst of sin, that the other nations can easily conquer and overcome us, which therefore means that they had the power and the authority and the permission to keep us in the midst of sin. But look what verse 21 says, but if there be no iniquity in their nation, let my Lord now pass by. He says, let's leave them alone. He says, let's their Lord defend them. They understood that the most high would defend us if we're keeping his commandments. And that's a lesson for many of you that feel like you're left out there by yourself. And the most high hasn't come to your rescue on a situation yet. I dare you to continue keeping his commandments and watch how it is. The most high comes to your aid. Hallelujah. Let's read on. It says, but if there be no iniquity in their nation, let my Lord now pass by. Let their Lord defend them and their God be for them. And we become a reproach before all the world. So it was understood, brothers and sisters, by the other nations, by your enemies, in order for us to make sure that the name of Israel be no more in remembrance, we got to keep them in sin which means that we got to put stuff in front of them that feels good, that looks good, that's fun for them to do. That's why 2 Maccabees 4 and 15 says, not setting by the honors of their fathers, but liking the glory of the Grecians best of all. Our people begin to like the glory of the Grecians best of all. Not setting by the honors of their fathers, but liking the glory of the Grecians best of all. Our people love the glory of the Grecians best of all. Our people love pledging. Our people love keeping the holidays. Our people love eating their foods. Our people love their festivities, their games, their sports. Our people love it. Our people love it. Our people love it. And we have to understand, brothers and sisters, that these are things, many of them, 
are things that our enemies have put in front of us to push us away from the most high. Now, does it mean that you're automatically in the midst of sin when you do it? No. But what it does mean is that you can like that thing so much that you're willing to break the most high's laws, statutes, and commandments to do it. You're willing to turn away from the most high's laws. You're willing to turn away from your own customs. You're willing to turn away from your own holy days to do it. Not understanding and not knowing that many of these things are pagan at its very core. And, and these pagans set up these days to, to serve their demonic gods. To serve their demonic gods. All right? But our people like the glory of the Grecians best of all. But you're not Greek. You're not a Gentile grafted in, brothers and sisters. You are the biblical Israelites. And it's high time that you that you take that thing seriously. It's high time that you wake up to that understanding. Hallelujah. So not only would they possess God's people and remove their customs and laws, but they also took their image. They also take that took their image. How can they take the houses of God in possession? Take their image. You no longer call yourself an Israelite if you cannot find anyone that looks like you represented as an Israelite. If you see all Caucasian images in the scriptures, you won't identify yourself with being an Israelite. If in the movies all you see is the images of another nation and not yourself representing the most highest people representing the, 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 the people that we know of this in the scriptures, then you won't identify yourself as being the true Jews. And so the people that are in your land today continue to get away with the biggest theft in mankind. And that's your identity. The theft of your identity. So they took your image, brothers and sisters. So we're going to get into the to the whiting out. We're going to get into the whiting out, brothers and sisters. So let's get into that thing. All right. And I'm going to move quickly now. So take yourself some good notes. Go back and watch the class. Make sure that you like, share. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, make sure you're subscribing. Make sure you're hitting that like button. Right, so we can get that channel boosted up, brothers and sisters. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, those of you watching, take take about five seconds to qu quickly hit that subscribe button. One, two, three, four, five. All right, hallelujah. All right, so let's go to First Maccabees chapter three. First Maccabees chapter three and verse forty-eight. Look what it says. And laid open the book of the law, wherein. The heathen had sought to paint the likeness of their images. So the heathen sought to paint the likeness of their images. Paint the likeness of their images where? Wherever a biblical representation of someone is. They went in and began to whitewash those images. Like you see this Ashkenazi Jew right here, whitewashing the image. You see the, the image that he's painting right there? That image that he's painting right there? And then you see back there what that image used to be, how dark it used to be. You see this image here? Dark, dark image. But he's painting over. You can clearly see the color difference, brothers and sisters. You can see the color difference there. That's a whitewashing that our people uh, ex uh, had to deal with because guess what? They sought to paint the likeness of their images, of their images. See that? Here's some more. The true color of our people. These are dark. That's Christ in the middle, the disciples around him, all dark images. These are the images that 
the Russian icons understood. This is what they have in their archives, in their net catacombs. Guess what? You don't have access to it. I bet you can't go to your church and find images like this. You see that? So they sought to paint the likeness of their images. All right, here's another whitewash. You can clearly see the one on the left. The before picture is dark. The same picture uh, redone is now looking like a Caucasian, so-called white man, the devil that the Bible speaks of. You see that? So they sought to paint the likeness of their images. How will they get you from knowing who you are? Take away your images. Right? Now here's another one. It says this, this particular one, they couldn't whitewash. It says Moses, they couldn't whitewash found in the catacombs in, uh, in Russia. You see that? They couldn't whitewash this one. Before we got to it, we were able to get the records on it. But you can clearly see this is a dark man. This is not a Caucasian. This is not an Edomite. This is a dark man. Right? So they sought to, to paint the likeness of their images. All right? Look at this. This is what they gave you as... Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, or Jesus the Christ, all right? But look what the Bible describes, how the Bible describes him. I mean, you tell me if this devil is the likeness of Christ, which is in the likeness of the Father. Revelation 1 and 1. It says, the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant, John. So Christ is revealing himself through the permission of the most high unto John. All right. Now this is the revealing of the revelation of Christ. Watch how Christ is described when John sees him. Verse 14, his head and his hairs were white like wool. So first of all, we're looking for the texture. This devil doesn't have a texture of wool. And it says, as white as snow. This devil doesn't even have the, the color of a man with the gray beard and hair or would, would be considered white. All right. And it says, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. And it says, and his feet like unto fine brass. So when you see someone's feet, you can, you can assume that his skin or his face is going to be the same color. Cause I don't know many people who have a different color foot than their face, or it's going to be close to the same color. All right. But you can, I you can clearly tell that that foot belongs to that face and that face belongs to that foot. All right. But it says in its feet, like unto fine brass as if they burned in a furnace. So this is brass. That's very dark. It says, and his voice as the sound of many waters. So let's get, let's look at him again. All right. Let's look at him again. Does he fit the description at all, brothers and sisters? But this is the picture that grandma have in her house, that many of your mothers have in their houses. This is the picture, and this is the image that your pastor has in the church, which is crazy. How in the world do you have a church full of Israelites with dark skin and asking them to serve a Caucasian God? Come on. I saw that madness uh, in a video 
that I saw in uh, of some people in Africa walking around with a statue. They're praising and worshiping a statue, and this statue was the Caucasian image that they gave us to represent Jesus the Christ. Come on, man. That was the, <laughs> that was the worst look ever. To see these people of dark skin walking around praising their slave master. Praising their slave master. And you wonder why Christ hasn't returned yet. Because our people, our, our people need, uh, I want to be nice. Let me, let me, let me be nice. I don't, I don't want to be, I don't want to be mean brothers. Let me, let me be nice. I say our people need counseling. Our people need counseling. And this wicked devil has done a number on us. But this image here does not fit the description of Christ. Doesn't fit the description of Christ. You're right, sis. You're right, Sister Jen. Our people refuse to, to come out of that thing. Hallelujah. But we're praying and we're gonna keep we're gonna keep pushing this truth and we're gonna keep pushing this understanding until the one third wake the hell up and we can be out of here. Hallelujah. All right. So now, does he fit that image? Let's look at it closely now. Revelation 1, 14 and 15, it says his hair white and woolly, his feet burnt like burned brass, right? You see burned brass right there. You see the wool, the white wool, and you look to your left and you see, now this is, we're not saying that this is Yahweh Shai. We're just saying that this is what he, this is what he would have looked more closely like than this fella to the right. You see, he has the gray beard or, or the white beard and the white hair. He has the skin like burnt brass. Not this devil. <laughs> Not this devil. So if you want to take possession of the most highest people, you got to remove their image. You got to remove their image so that they look at him and say, this is God. And they look at him and say, this is a nigga. This is God. This is a nigga. I should love him and hate him. Understand that. All right. So now Christ was of the tribe of Judah. Let's get that in Hebrews 7 and 14 to prove it. Hebrews 7 and 14. It says, For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah, of which tribe Moses spake nothing concerning priesthood. Because at the time Moses walked the earth, the priesthood belonged to the Levites. But there was going to come a day that the priesthood, the hands of the priesthood is going to change. And it's going to be the tribe of Judah under Christ that's running the show. Hallelujah. So Christ sprang out of the tribe of Judah. So it would stand to say that if this is the true biblical description of Christ on the left, then that must mean Judah has some melanin. Judah is a black man, black women. Hallelujah for that thing. But not just Judah, right? Because if he came out of Judah and Judah came out of the Israelites, guess what? We all have melanin. Now, Ephraim has mixed himself, and we'll get into that in another lesson. So that's why you see uh, the so-called Hispanics, the, 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 the Latins and all of them, lighter in complexion. But we'll get into that in another lesson. 
All right. So now let's go to Matthew. Chapter two, verse two, watch this saying, where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. So we know that Christ is king of the Jews. He's our king. He's our king now. And he's going to be our king when he comes back to get us. Hallelujah. But how can they take possession of the most high's house? They one, possess the most high's people. They two, removed the customs and laws that we have. They three took our image and then fourthly, they stole our land. They stole our land, brothers and sisters, and I'm going to prove it. Where is our land? First of all, and my wife brought that out earlier. I, I, I saw your post. I saw your comment earlier, but let's get it. Galatians four and 26. It says, but Jerusalem, which is above is free which is the mother of us all. So Jerusalem is the motherland, not Africa. Who told you that? <laughs> she said, don't forget about us, Gad. Tribe of Gad. Tribe of Gad, stand up, man. I, lo I love my tribe. <laughs> Hallelujah. But anyway, Jerusalem is the mother of us all, not Africa. Now, Africa would be the Hamites' mother. But our motherland is Jerusalem. Hallelujah for that thing. And we're going to get back to that thing soon enough. All praise to the Most High. We continue pressing on. We continue enduring to the end, keeping the law, statutes, and commandments, and we are out of here. But until then, brothers and sisters, you got to hang in there. And you got to endure and you have to tell your people to wake up that they are not Gentiles. They are the Israelites. The people in that land today are imposters. Hallelujah. All right. So let's, let's get second Ezra's because we're going to talk about the people that took possession of our land. Second Ezra's one and 35 in the Apocrypha. Second Ezra's. One and 35 in the Apocrypha. Look what it says. Your houses will I give to a people that shall come. So it says your houses sh will I give to a people that shall come. So how did the most high give our houses away? Right. We're talking about our land right here. How did he give our land away? Let's go to Deuteronomy 28, 15. Deuteronomy 28, verse 15. Look what it says. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So the Most High promised that if we broke his commandments, that we're going to get the curses. We talked about that earlier, right? But what curses? Because we need to understand how our houses were given away. All right. Let's drop down to verse 25. Look what it says. The Lord shall cause thee to be smitten before thine enemies. Thou shalt go out one way against them and flee seven ways before them and shalt be removed into all the kingdoms of the earth. So the first thing that happened in slavery because these nations figured out that if they keep us in the midst of sin, the most high won't fight for us. Guess what? We got scattered. We got removed into all the kingdoms of the earth. In, in other words, into every other nation to serve slavery and captivity. So we had, to, so that happened by way of us no longer being in our land no longer occupying our motherland, our holy place, all right? Let's get some more on that. 
Let's go to Deuteronomy. Let's tr- let's jump down to verse number sixty-four. Look what it says. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people, from the one end of the earth even unto the other. And there thou shalt serve other gods, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. The wood representing the, the wooden cross of Christianity, the stone representing the cobblestone of Mecca or the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, Ishmaelite nation people. All right. So we have a scattering for breaking the most highest commandments. And these nations are going to force their gods on us. Gods that our forefathers knew nothing about. Our forefathers didn't know anything about Christianity. That's a new religion. Our forefathers didn't know anything about Islam. That's a new religion on the earth. All right. Now it's not it's it is new, it's even newer than Christianity. Understand that. So we would be scattered as a nation of people for breaking the most high's laws, which means we're not in our land. But he says our houses he'll give to another people. All right. Let's jump up to verse 33. No, no, let's jump down to verse 68. Let's go to 68. It says, And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. And that's going to be talking about slave ships. It says, By the way whereof I spake unto thee, says the way it's going to happen, the way I'm telling you it's going to happen. It says, Thou shalt see it no more again. See what no more again? Our land. Jerusalem. Which is above is free and the mother to us all. It says, and there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen, slave man and slave woman. And no man shall buy you, meaning no man shall redeem you. There are those that have tried. Malcolm X tried. Martin Luther King tried. Marcus Garvey tried. You have even some modern day people that have tried. And none accomplished it. All were shut down. Even the Black Panther Party had to be disbanded. And those revolutionaries had to be on the run or in jail. Exiled or locked up or killed. Because it's only for Christ to return and redeem us. Because this wicked nation is not going to go quietly. They're not going to go easy. It's going to have to be, according to the scripture, some bloodshed. It's going to have to be. Understand that, brothers and sisters. But guess what? We are taking away yet another scripture to prove a way to another place that we have to get there by ship to serve slavery, which means we're no longer in our land. Thou shalt see it no more Again. So what happened to the land? Let's drop down to verse 33. Uh, drop, drop up to verse 33. It says, The fruit of thy land and all thy labors shall a nation which thou knowest not eat up. That's what happened. They're eating up our land. They are defiling our temples. They are defiling our holy place. They call it the holy land. That's a bunch of crap. That land is not holy right now. That land is defiled. And it's going to continue to be defiled until we can get back. Hallelujah. But it says, The fruit of thy land and all thy labor shall in a nation which thou knowest not eat up, and thou shalt be only oppressed and crushed alway, which is what we experience here in this land. Oppression and crushing. We live uh, in such fear, even going from our, from the corner store to our house, we have to live in fear. Because we don't know when that tra- traffic stop 
is going to end badly for us. We don't know if pumping the gas at the gas station won't cause someone to jump in our car and drive off or someone to try to rob us or someone to, to come and shoot us. I saw a video of where a brother was coming out of the gas station, going to his car. He was coming out of the store park, going to his car. Some dude walks up in a, in a hoodie and shoots him as he was trying to get in his car. And guess what? It was all over his gold chain. This is what we have to deal with brothers and sisters. Because one, we hate each other. We don't see Christ in each other. We don't see that Christ is a black man. So that way, when we look at each other, we still see nigger. And we see God when we look at the white police officer. We see God. How in the world can God put his knee on my neck until I die? How in the world can God... Put me in a chokehold until I pass away. How in the world can God, with me just sitting in the passenger seat with my wife, start putting bullets in my chest, talking about don't move? What you mean? I'm not moving. Don't resist. What you mean? I'm not resisting. How in the world can God do us this when we are a people that love? I tell you why, because we have been given a false image of God. They took away our image and they took away our land. It says the fruit of thy land and all thy labors shall a nation which thou knowest not eat up. Let's go to Zechariah chapter nine, verse six. Look what Zechariah nine and six says. And a bastard shall dwell in Ashdod. Now let's talk about this bastard. I've been, I've been itching. <laughs> I've been itching to get to this all night. Let's talk about the bastard that shall dwell in Ashdod. In order for us to identify this bastard that the Bible speaks of, we have to identify first where Ashdod is because the bastard shall dwell in Ashdod. Bastard shall dwell in Ashdod. So where is Ashdod? Let's get it. This is from Wikipedia. Ashdod. It says is the sixth largest city and the largest port. Guess where? In Israel. Why? But wait a minute. It says, and a bastard shall dwell in Ashdod. Let's go. Let's get it again. Ashdod is the sixth largest city and the largest port in Israel. Ashdod is located in the southern district of the country. Ashdod today is home to the largest Moroccan Jewish community in Israel, the largest Karite Jewish community in Israel, and the largest Georgian Jewish community in Israel. But it says in Zechariah 9 and 6, and a bastard shall dwell in Ashdod. So who is this bastard that the Bible speaks of that's dwelling in Ashdod. These are your bastards, ladies and gentlemen. Say hello to your bastards, your fake Jews, your Khazar. Your imposters, your liars, your synagogue of Satan's. These are your bastards because it told us where Ashdod is. It is the land of Israel. 
where the nation which we know not is eating up our stuff, our resources, tearing apart our land, defiling our land. Because they have one of the biggest gay parade and celebrations in the world. In Israel, you know, what they call the Holy Land. Understand that, right? Now let's go back to Zechariah 9 and 6. Look what it says. An ambassador shall dwell in Ashdod, and I will cut off the pride of the Philistines. What is that going into? Cutting off the pride. Watch what it says in Revelation 2 and 9. In Revelation 2 and 9, it says, I know thy works and tribulation and poverty. Christ is speaking to us. He says, I know you're going through. I know you're suffering. I know you're struggling. He says, but look, but thou art rich. How are we rich? Because the kingdom belongs to us. It says, and I know the blasphemy, which means lies, of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. So Christ understood, and he was trying to let us know that there's going to be a nation of people calling themselves you. And it's going to be a day that you're going to forget who you are. Don't believe them you are the people you are the people brothers and sisters you so called blacks hispanics and native american indians you are the people and that people over there are the synagogue of satan and they are liars and imposters let's go back to psalms 83 watch this Watch this. Psalms 83 and 1. Keep not thou silence, O God, because we don't want him to be silent anymore. It's time for him to blow the trumpet. It's time for him to, 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 to bring the awareness, ring the alarm. He says, keep not thy silence, O God. Hold not thy peace and be not still, O God. Send Christ in a hurry. He says, for lo, thine enemies make a tumult, and they that hate thee have lifted up their head. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. They, for they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against thee. And it looks like it's working. And it looks like it has worked for hundreds of years. It's worked. And look what it says, verse 6. The tabernacles of Edom, we know who you are. And the Israelites, we know who you are. Of Moab, we know who you are. And the Hagarines, Gabal, and Ammon, and Amalek, the Philistines, with the inhabitants of Tyre, Assur, we know who you are. We know who you are. And the Most High knows who you are. And when he sends Christ and the angels, and we, as the men of Israel, are changed, guess what? It's going to be time to take our stuff back. Hallelujah. We're taking our stuff back. Because we know this wicked nation is not going to go quietly. Not going to go quietly. Why do you think they are already prepared to do war in space? All of these nations who are mad with each other normally, they're coming together. They are confederate for one consent, and that is, oh, there, there's a threat in outer space. Let's come together and wage a space program that we can defend ourselves when they come. Guess what? They don't know that all they're going to be trying to fight 
It's Christ and the angels. That's what I, I like to see them fighting at, fight fighting the angels. I like to see him fighting Michael, <laughs> Gabriel. I like to see it. I like to see it. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right, so let's move. Let's move on. Verse twelve. It says, "Who said, let us take to our how to ourselves the houses of God in possession?" So, who took the houses of God in possession? Who possessed the Most High's people? Who possessed the Most High's people? Who possessed the Most High's people? That, that's right, Jim. Chariots. Who possessed the Most High's people? Who possessed, brothers and sisters, the Most High's people? And who removed our customs and laws. Daniel 7 and 25. It says, and he shall speak great words against the most high and shall wear out the saints of the most high and think to change times and laws. And they shall be given into his hand until a time and times and the dividing of times, which that time is almost up. That time should be up just about now. But, who removed our customs and laws? Who removed, brothers and sisters, our customs and our laws? Who did it? Because they're trying to take the houses of God in possession, which they had us in possession. But guess what? We're waking up now. We're waking up now. And they're going to get their behind spank when Christ returns. They think they're seeing these, these doggone what they call UFOs in, in, in the sky now. And my wife and I were looking at a video, and it showed how the, uh, the neighbor was trying to, uh, trying to, uh, to lock, put, a, put that lock with their weapons on it. It couldn't even keep up with that thing. It was going so fast. And they said, these, these uh, vehicles have technology that we don't have no idea. That their technology is beyond what these people who master war and military can comprehend. These people that master science can com cannot comprehend the type of technology that they see these ships operating in. But guess what, brothers and sisters? That's 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 not no Martians. <laughs> these are angels. These are the chariots of the Lord coming to see about us, getting ready, getting ready. Why? Because this truth is bigger than it's ever been. So they're getting ready. They're getting ready. To come and redeem us from the hand of our enemy and from all that hate us. So they possessed the most high's people. They removed our customs and laws and they took our images. Who took our images? Check this out. This little, read this little caption down here. It says, look at, look at the picture first. Check out the picture those of you that can see it. And it says the Italian painter, Andrea Mantegna's adoration of the Magi from AD 1505 features three distinct Magi who, according to one contemporary tradition came from Africa, which we can assume is him. The middle East, which we can assume is him. It says, and Asia, which we can assume is probably him. All right. Now watch this. They present expensive objects of porcelain, a gate and brass that would have been prized imports from China and the Persian and Ottoman empire. So these are supposed to be 
the three wise men. But watch this. It says, but Jesus is light skin right there. And blue eyes suggest that he is not Middle Eastern, but European born. And the full Hebrew script embroidered on Mary's cuff. You can't really see it, but it's right there. It says, and him line belly, a complicated relationship to the Judaism of the Holy family and Mantegna's Italy anti-Semitic myths were already prevalent among the majority Christian population with Jewish people often segregated to their own quarters of major cities. Artists tried to distant distance Jesus and his parents from their Jewishness, meaning they supposed to have some dark skin. It says even seemingly small attributes like pierced ears, earrings were associated with Jewish women their removal with a conversion to Christianity could represent a tradition toward the Christianity represented by Jesus. Much later, anti-Semitic forces in Europe, including the Nazis, would attempt to divorce Jesus totally from his Judaism in favor of an Aryan stereotype. What are they saying? They're saying that they did everything they could to make sure that we don't identify with a dark Christ. Took away our images. Understand that. So not only would they uh, did they possess us as a people in slavery, and then while we were in slavery, remove our customs and laws, and then take our images, but who stole our land? Who stole our land? They say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. They are the synagogue of Satan who took our land. They are the bastards, brothers and sisters. They are the bastards. Hallelujah. And guess what? It's high time that we wake out of sleep and understand who we are dealing with. We are dealing with a world that's been turned upside down and we are supposed to be on the top. But when it was turned upside down, because of our sin, we are at the bottom. How do we return back to the top? Begin keeping the law, statutes, and commandments of the Most High in Christ. Believe in Christ with all your heart. And endure to the end. The Bible says the same shall be saved. That's how you get salvation, brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. And we want these bastards out of our land. And our land restored. We're going to make them work to restore our land back to health. And we're only going to do it through Christ. Hamashiach. Hallelujah. So I pray you got something out of today's lesson, brothers and sisters. Uh, I pray that it was edifying to you. So next Tuesday, we talked about the bastard this week. We talked about the bastard this week. But next Tuesday, next Tuesday, Lord willing, we're going to take it higher, brothers and sisters. So next Tuesday, we're going to go into the dragon. Who's the dragon? Because we hear it spoken about in Revelation. But who's the dragon? We're going to go into that, Lord's willing, on next week. So let's close with Ecclesiastes 12 and 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear the most high and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. And I close with this every Tuesday, Galatians 4 and 16. Am I therefore your enemy? Because I tell you the truth. All right, brothers and sisters, I pray that you got something out of today's lesson. Make sure that you 
uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Those of you that haven't done so already, make sure you subscribe, make sure that you share, make sure that you like, make sure that you look at the other lessons that are there, brothers and sisters. Get involved. Get involved, brothers and sisters, because